Peace, peace. This your host, Eli Shalom. I'm out here enjoying the day once again. You know what I mean? Enjoying nature, the natural things in life. Sometimes you got to escape from the working world and connect with creation. Connect with nature. Hear the birds chirp and feel the breeze. Hear the leaves breeze in the wind. Be around some water. Roar to bring tranquility and peace. You gotta connect with nature. A lot of y'all are bound to the books, bound to philosophy, doctrine, but really do you come to nature and enjoy the tranquility and peace of nature. Nature should be what you should be studying, essentially, because nature is part and parcel part of the creator. This is the seen aspect of the creator when we look at nature. So you want to understand how the creator function, look at nature. You can't go wrong with that. Look at the four seasons. Spring, summer, fall, winter, and then it repeats itself again. These are sub-cycles for mortals on a corporeal level to start understanding these cycles because these cycles got bigger cycles, grander cycles. Just like I said, the four seasons, spring, summer, fall, winter, and the planet goes to that on a larger scale, the four ages. Time of creation, time of inhabitation, time of barrenness, time of destruction and rest. So there's a correlation with that. Now we cannot live the lifespan to see the four ages. So with that being said, the creator made a miniature cycle for us to comprehend in our corporeal lives, being that we live a short corporeal life. Because the four ages is five, um, the four ages is 576,000 years. 144 years make one age. We don't live that long to even see a cycle. So how would we know this? The only way we would know this or have this understanding is by beings who have seen the cycles run and could explain to us that, yo, this is how your earth works. Your earth goes through ages, a time of creation, a time of inhabitation, a time of barrenness, and a time of dis, uh, dissolution and destruction or rest. And then the cycle repeats itself. The example for us to understand that macrocosm understanding is by understanding our microcosm understanding through nature, through the four seasons. So we could experience the aspect of creation with our four seasons. When you look at an apple tree, an apple tree only gives its fruit during summer. But during the springtime, that fruit is in development. It's in rebirth. It's in the process of producing fruit. So by the time summer comes, you start seeing the fruits hanging off the tree. And then when fall comes, you reap in the harvest. But then when winter comes, that tree ain't gonna bear fruit in the winter. You have to wait for that cycle to come back around. Same thing with creation. We never seen how man, mortals, animals, mammals, reptiles were created. All we have is hypothesis and theories because we wasn't there to bear witness it. But there will be a time when we ascend as spiritual beings and we start transversing the cosmos and the creator may say, go to this corporeal world and I'm gonna show you how things were created and you can have an understanding in your mind how animal and man was created. And then the creator may send you to a corporeal world that that corporeal world may be in its time of creation. And it may be at a point where animal and man may start to be created. And we may be able to bear witness to the creation. The same way you could bear witness to, the, to, the, to, to a fruit tree bearing fruit. You could record it and actually see the fruit form and, and come about. And then you can say, hey, I've seen that. But if you came later in the summer and the, and, and the fruits are already hanging off the tree, you, you didn't see the process of creation. So being that we live in the inhabitable age, we cohabit species, descendancy of the, 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 the original people, original family, original humans, we wasn't there to bear witness to the creation. So all we have is hypotheses and theories about how man came about. But the OWASP gives you an understanding that there will come a time where you will be able to bear witness how animal and man are created. 
when you ascend in your um, spiritual body and, and transverse through creation. See, we're going to know all things eventually. All things we learn, we're going to continue to learn. And we're going to become all-knowing of that which we have learned. You can't be all-knowing of something you don't know. But everything you, 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 you experience, that's, that's your development of learning. So, nature, study nature. Nature knows no lies. Study the sun and the moon cycles. If you're not doing these things, you're not really in tuning yourself with creation. You know, you got the, the, the winter solstice, the summer solstice, the equinox, all these things are based off the Roman calendar. In antiquity, they didn't base it off no man-made calendar. They based it off the sun and the moon, and they, they may stick something up so they can see how the shadow aligns. They may put up two woods. When the sun rises in the center, you know that's the equinox. It was different things that the ancient indigenous people did using the sun and the moon. Wood and stone to detect time. Which I don't want to put in that work. You just want to say, ah, forget it. Passover's April. April 13th, April, whatever, moon April in instead of really figuring it out. Another topic I want to touch on is creation as it is. And then you have the biblical or religious philosophical creation. You got the Egyptian creation story. It talks about Gab, Nut, Shu. You know, you got that, which is metaphorical, symbolic, which ain't nothing wrong with but it's false at the end of the day. It's not a true account of creation. So the comedic account of creation is false. Hook, line, and sinker. Straight to the point. It was an aspect that they used at that time to express creation how they understood it. Same thing with the Babylonians. The Babylonians is where you get your seven day creation story from that you have in your Bible. And in that creation story, it says that the world, the heavens and the earth were created in six days, God rested on the seventh. Now, that's another false account of creation. So if these accounts of creation is all we have and all what we know, then what's the true account? Can a lie have been held on for 6,000 years for that long? That, that they lied back then? And that lie still exists today, but you believe this lie is fact? It's false. A waspy lays out creation. Now, when you read the comedic creation tale, when you read the Babylonian Hebraic creation tale, the Christian and, and Muslim tale, because they all believe in that seven-day creation tale, what you find is that none of these creation stories talk about the vortex. In a waspy, it says the vortex is the first cause of creation. With that being said, how are you going to express creation without mentioning the vortex first? That's a dagger right there. That's a dagger right there. What is a vortex? A vortex is basically a world, like a whirlwind, a hurricane, a tornado. These are the expressions of vortexian current in nature. We don't see gab in nature. We don't see shoe, these are metaphorical symbols, but what is the reality? The reality is that whirlwind you see, that hurricanes, them tornadoes, them cyclones, those are examples of creation, examples of how things are generated, how creation is generated through vortexian current. This is how it works. This is what the comedic creation don't tell you. This is what the Babylonian, Hebraic, Christian creation don't tell you, is that in creation, everything is expressed in three forms, solid, liquid, and gas. Out of these three forms, gas is the first element of creation because liquid and solid are a combination of gases. Liquid is a combination of gas. So if you separate that liquid, it'll go back to its original form, which is a gas state, likewise with solids. Now. 
Now that we know that the first cause of creation we're dealing with is gas. So all the minerals expressed in creation are expressed in a gas form. Before they become liquid and solid, they're gases. Iron, gold, nickel, carbon. Well, oxygen and, and hydrogen are nitrogens are already gases. But everything on the mineral basis is expressed in a gas form. Now what the creator do is this. In creation, before there, are, before there is motion, there is stillness, where nothing is in motion, in a particular part of creation. So they may be whirling worlds over here, but right here, nothing's going on. So the creator may go in this little area and say, all right, I'm going to develop a, a corporeal or a solar system here. So what he'll do is, he will start the vortex. He will start the rotation. Only the creator could do this. He'll start the gases to form the same way you see a tornado forming, the same way you see a hurricane forming, the same way you see a cyclone forming. By gathering gases, dust, and driving them to the center of the vortex. That's the first cause of creation. If your comedic doctrine don't tell you that, if your biblical Babylonian Christian doctrine don't tell you that, then you're starting off on the wrong foot already. So now that we understand that the first cause of creation is the vortex by precipitating gas into the center of the vortex, and what does that do? It creates a molten globe of fire. It becomes apparent now. It becomes seen. Let there be light. This is where there, your let there be light comes from. It comes from the manufacture of the vortex. Because the vortex manufacture light by generating the minerals to the center of the vortex, producing heat, producing warmth, producing the fire. And then it becomes visible to the sight. Now we can see it. And as this, this ball of fire begins to develop, and keep in mind that this ball of fire is, is, is in motion. Depending on the creator's intent, that, that ball of fire, basically it's a comet at this point, technically speaking, it's a comet. That comet can continue to grow or it could dissipate. If it continue to grow, it could form into a sun. And that sun can produce vortices within it, producing corporeal worlds, which is the construct of the solar system. But at the same time, that sun, that globe of fire, is still in the process of creation because it got to go through its four ages if it doesn't precipitate back into dissolution. So if it decides to go through four ages, what would happen is that the, the, the globe and fire will begin to cool down and what we would have is the mineral kingdom and then what we would have is the vegetable kingdom and then later animal and man or humans and then the inhabitable age begins. That is the essence of creation. That's a fact that the mineral kingdom, the vegetable kingdom, and the animal kingdom is in that manner. And the waspi expressed that in that manner. And these things are not done in 6,000 years. The waspi says it takes 144,000 years for these things to occur, which is one age, and they were that significant number of 144,000. So the first cause of creation is the vortex, and from the vortex, it produced planetary worlds, go through their four ages, then the cycle repeats. But all corporeal worlds start with a vortex. The sun has a vortex, and within the sun's vortex are smaller vortices that produce the planets. Even the moon have vortexes around it. You cannot have a corporeal body without having a vortex to support it. That's why we could sit in the middle of space hanging on nothing, floating in thin air. It's due to the vortex. The reason why you don't go flying off the planet is due to the vortex. The vortex spins and draws you down, what some will call gravity. But it's not gravity, it's vortexian current. When you jump up and bring you back down, that's the vortexian current. Along with your weight, of course, even you have a vortex around you. It's called an aura. You know what I'm saying? 
Everything that exists deals with vortexian current. You cannot have life if you don't have vortexian current. Magnetism is based off of vortexian current. So by the Bible, by the comedic text, by the Babylonian text, not talking about the vortex, anybody talk about creation, dealing with Kemet, dealing with the Bible, is going to be off every time. If you don't mention that vortex first, you off. I wanted to touch on that.